Hey there, just Jeremiah here. Today's like, what, the 4th of April? I don't know. I'm like almost caught up on my YouTube. I'm about to, uh, about to finish editing from the 1st, which was just the other day. And feeling good. Yeah, feeling good. I feel like since I'm not walking as much, I'm putting a little bit, bit of weight back on, but I don't want to lose my dad bod. You know, they find it uh, appealing nowadays because the heavier I am, the harder it is for me to run away. That's funny. It's probably all that tuna casserole I ate. Oh my gosh, I just got rid of the last slice. Uh, my neighbor Kat, when I was walking past, she joked around and said, oh, where's mine? And I said, I'll bring you some in a few days. So I stopped back and she wasn't home. And she's just some lady just down the street, not even in my complex. So I brought her some today. And then she comes after me. She's like, hey, what's your number? She's like, you know, my friends are all scuba diving, spear fishing, underwater photographers. And I'm like, what? So she, I get, she gives me her number. She says she has a bunch of fresh fish that comes in, like, you know, maybe one every week to every two months, you know? So it depends how often they go. But there we go, bam, more networking. I told her there's no such thing as coincidences. And she showed me this great white shot that she took, great white shark shot she took. Oh my gosh, it's fantastic. I have to interview her. She is just such a sweet lady. She's older, the cutest little dog. Her dog's about to get a surgery and so I'll be sending some prayers for her dog because I can tell that it's her baby, that is her life. It's a little Yorkshire Terrier with braids all up and down and just super yip, 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 yip. And then as soon as you pet her, she's like, all right, you're my new best friend. So I love, again, service unto others is just service unto yourself, you know? And I'm not doing that stuff just to like talk about it on YouTube. And I'm not doing that stuff just to, uh, just to, uh, you know, make myself seem like a really cool neighbor. Like, I'm doing it because I want to bring people up and show them that the people of the world are awesome by being a representative of the people of the world. And, you know, there's a lot of faith in humanity that, that's gone lost. And we can help rectify that ourselves. Uh, we can be the avatar of the human race and show people that things aren't that bad. Have hope, avoid fear. Loving this wind and rain, oh my gosh. So yeah, I'm headed down to the work meeting. We've been having a work meeting every week, which is a pain in the ass because I'm working so much then I gotta go in for another hour or two and man, but yeah, so I'm gonna go in. I've been scrubbing down the bathrooms. The bathrooms look like a little ass and there's just like rust and stuff that's built up on this uh, the stainless steel and yeah, uh, you know, it, to get one of the panels, it took me 20 minutes the other day, I came in early. But I feel like if you really want to lead, and I'm not trying to lead this group, but someone has to at least, I'm not looking for accolades as a leader. Again, being neurodivergent, I don't really care about what people think. Uh, but I do care about building up the group for our sake. So if I want to have any sway, what I need to do is put my shoulder into it just show without bringing it up myself, just show that I'm the guy that's willing to, you know, not just blame everyone else, just, oh, that's been that way, that's everyone else's fault. You know, everyone goes in there every day to go get ready for work, but no one's putting any elbow grease into it, and the guests have to deal with it, and the restaurant's not hiring a cleaner, so, man, they got me. So I'm cleaning the bathroom with Sheila Shine, and I'm going to get it done by the end of the week, and again, what I'm, you have to... Lead by example, not tell anyone what to do, but then once you're the guy who's, and this reminds me a lot of the Taos Rainbow Gathering where everyone's arguing over how things need to be done, but everyone telling everyone else how things should be done are the ones doing nothing. You really just need to get your elbow in there, get your, your, your elbow grease in there, put your shoulder to it. Then uh, once you're in there deep, you need to relegate and delegate. You know, you need to say, hey, I'm going to go work on this. Would you possibly consider going to do that? And if they don't, that's fine. Again, don't tell anyone, hey, go do this. Ask them once you're already doing something, if they would help. And then assign people to delegate, right? So, hey, if you could, why don't you find someone else and delegate a task to them? So delegate and relegate, but only after... Yeah, only after... Sorry, one second. Leading by example. So that is my goal. That's how I try to transform every restaurant I go to. I just 
really get in there, I clean and I scrub and I'll spend you know, an hour, two hour, whatever, whatever time I have in the downtime, just scrubbing away, cleaning, organizing, you know, setting up new procedures possibly, new ergonomics of systems, slowly and while not telling anyone what to do ever. And then when it finally gets to the point where I feel like I've got uh, a group who identifies with the direction I'm, I'm bringing things, then I start asking people if they would be on board and explaining how once we get more people, we can create a shift. We can raise the uh, whole vibe of the restaurant and it creates a type of energistic feng shui. It's not necessarily where physical things are placed. It's an energy field that we're raising in the restaurant that will draw people in without them even knowing why. Without them seeing the bathroom, suddenly there's an energy there that is energy of pride and abundance. And these are things I like to harness that I've always harnessed. And sometimes I'm working at a place where it's just like everyone is totally working against me. This guy, <laughs> Sky Waikiki. Uh, you know, that place has a really nice view, so it's not gonna happen, douche. I don't walk signal. Uh, that place has a really nice view, so it's never gonna happen. But uh, again, 3.2 on TripAdvisor with the nicest view and tasty food. They should be ashamed of themselves. And, uh, but other places that are just like in a plaza or whatever, you know, uh, I've worked several places where when I left, I was holding everything together like that and I tried so hard and I realized that the place didn't stand a chance and that it wasn't worth my time and effort. So I left and honestly, two weeks later, a restaurant would close like at least three or four times. Two weeks to a month later, a restaurant would close. And I'm not saying I'm extra important, but all it takes is one person, you know? By assuming that I'm just some douche trying to talk himself up, what you're doing is you're downplaying the power that one person has. You're taking away your own power. Also to some people that are like, you are just talking yourself up and you have an ego and this and that. This is my video journal. You're invited into my life. Don't take that shit for granted. You don't have to be here. I'm never gonna get this monetized. I don't need it monetized. I don't need money. I'm literally spending hundreds and potentially thousands of hours, tons of money, all my energy to share my video journal. If you don't like it, get the fuck out. Like seriously. Uh, or just stay and troll, that's great. But just so you know, everyone realizes that you're the biggest low life on the channel and you're, riddle, you're literally just upset because a bunch of people like someone who you have a hard time with. And the thing is, I challenge worldviews. That's just who I am. That's part of neurodivergence. And if that's uncomfortable, it says more about you than it does about me. So for the rest of you loving you, uh, I know that I must challenge your worldview just as much as I challenge those poor, poor little trolls. But the thing is, obviously, you're someone who is not just willing to have your worldview challenged, you're, you embrace it, you know? You're on a path of personal growth. The two biggest things that inhibit personal growth are ego and comfort. So let those poor little trolls with their huge egos, which I have an ego too. When you say you don't, you've got a worse ego than the rest of us. Uh, but those poor little trolls with their huge egos, let them stay in their comfortable little tight box, just like they've been programmed to do. So the rest of you, thank you for not just believing what I say, but being open to hearing it. I think it says a lot about you. And just so you know, I'm loving you. And yeah, the Rainbow Gathering's coming. You should uh, go back and look at my Rainbow Gathering Taos video and know that I will be putting my two weeks notice in at my job because they won't get me off. Uh, just a time to go fly out to Colorado, hitchhike to the Rainbow Gathering. I'm probably gonna put together an intentional art community by creating a nonprofit and using the internet to gather funds so that I can send them towards, uh, yeah, gathering a bunch of art supplies, maybe even used art supplies in the Colorado area on the towns on the way. So come through, find someone with a really, uh, yeah, probably find someone who, I know a guy who's gonna have a huge fan. We can fill it up and he wants to go. And uh, yeah, art community would be awesome. You know, for a week you could just go there and paint and draw and do whatever. And uh, let me interview for my YouTube. Uh, we can have a blast and spread love the real way rather than just having all those people that show up. And the thing is, the Rainbow Gathering is not a festival. It's not a festival, it's a gathering. There's no money involved, there's no tickets involved. 
You show up with your year's bounty that you're willing to share, you have an idea or concept. It's not a place to just go get free weed. You know, bring other stuff. A lot of people, you know, like me, I got caught with four ounces of weed and an ounce of mushrooms going into the Taos Gathering, which is on my uh, YouTube channel, you'll see, uh, on the Rainbow Gathering, which I'll put a link to in the end of this video. Is it my turn? It's my turn. But, uh, yeah, so like, you just show up and bring bounty, bring, you know, whatever, bring it. And, oh, that's me. That's my bus. No, no, no. Hey, fellow travelers. I just finished work. Yeah, luckily after doing like 14 and 16 hour shifts, a nine hour shift is nothing just to walk in the park. Tonight was awesome. We sold a $150 shot of tequila. At the end, I sold a $180 uh, Louis the 13th and we sold a $150 bottle of wine at the very end uh, I got to meet some women that reminded me of my grandma they were so sweet I gave them my email and I got to meet two girls that I was flirting with at the very end that was cool as well uh, I'm a big flirt not that I'm gonna necessarily take it anywhere but yeah if they're in and out of town who knows so I'm just gonna go Figure out what's next. I have no clue what's next. I might just go home, but I'm feeling like I might want to try to meet people, so I think I might go to the bar and just have water. Water sucks, so I got my electrolyte powders I can mix in. But yeah, I'm headed that way now. Uh, to Kelly's, we'll see. Maybe I'll see people I know, but I don't know many people. So, that's what's going on. Loving you, peace. So that was fun. I just met, uh, I went into the bar, I had some sodas, it's bad for me, but he didn't even charge me, but I threw him a five spot because that's who I am. And yeah, if you're gonna sit at a bar taking up a seat, throw him like a buck at least. Uh, you know, for a water, for a soda, I just threw five flat. And uh, yeah, so I was sitting there, I was kind of bored. Some lady named Rain, she, uh, she was talking to me, but she was just like shit face drunk and her aunt just passed, so she was here. And so I talked to her and I helped her commiserate and gave her some of my encouragement that, you know, our struggles make us realize what we do have. Whenever we lose someone, it's really hard, but it really does make us focus on the things that we do have. And But then when the seat opened across the bar, I went over there and two guys next to me were talking about diving, but I didn't jump into the conversation. And then uh, eventually I said hi. We started talking to them and uh, yeah, I made two new friends, a Gian and Jamie, and they're both super awesome and they're both divers. So uh, Jamie works at the Cheesecake Factory and which is right around the corner. So he's also in the service industry and he's a free diver. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah, so he wants to go snorkeling together on Wednesday and I figure why not? I have a chance. Uh, to go and you know build a bigger network he knows people that are again I think today's the same day that I went this morning and I met that lady who's a scuba diver who knows people in the industry and I just keep having these people who are lining up with my vision and my plan and uh, I think he knows someone that uh, might I need to find for the business coming I'm gonna need to find an underwater makeup artist that I can can hit up uh, for the female and the underwater wedding photographies and yeah 
So networking, that's how I got to see the bar. I'm tired. Time to go home. It's like two in the morning. Uh, but yeah, I got done editing. Oh, sorry guys. Hello, sorry. South Carolina Reaper. But uh, so I just got done editing all my videos up to today, right now. So I'm about to like start load it, loading them tomorrow, which means I just have my one video a day to <clears throat> edit. Which means that I can start jumping back on the Burning Man videos. You know, can you imagine? Uh, I still don't know how I'm going to handle some of it. And honestly, the way that uh, my copyright stuff pops up is that I don't get strikes. They just get to monetize it. And I don't get to monetize my own video. So I guess I'm just going to start throwing it up there and seeing if... You know, I don't want to fuck with those DJs, though, because they put a lot of work in. Maybe I'll reach out through Burning Man and throw the videos on the Burning Man... Uh, Facebook group and be like, yo, uh, by the way, I'd really like to use some of this music and are the, do I need the DJ's permission? Because uh, I'm not trying to get my, my YouTube channel monetized. I'm just trying to share how awesome Burning Man is and hopefully, yeah, I can start loading that up, which might be like within tomorrow-ish. But for now, I'm going to catch the bus. I got to see where it is and when it is and Take the 45 minute bus walk home thing and then get some sleep, wake up, call the process server lady. She's going to bring that paperwork to my ex-landlord so that I can go to court on Tuesday, which I have off Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday and yeah, get awarded the cash from the possessions that I lost, about five grand I'd say. And yeah, it won't give me the money, and the court doesn't do the lien. I just realized I have to wait till the month is up. He has a month to pay, and then I'm going to have to pay another process server to go and start putting liens on the guy's possessions, uh, like his house and his business and everything. And uh, they're either going to sell it on auction, or he's going to have to pay me the money. So that's going to cost me more money. Just this uh, process server tomorrow is going to cost me 125 But caught up on rent I still have a bunch of paychecks coming in got my tips coming for next week uh, yeah I'm finally starting to like get saved towards yeah probably the $5,500 Sony RX 150 is my goal but uh about what's going on. I'm tired, I'm losing it. I'm gonna let you go. Loving you. Good night.